enemy. Welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Casual with your boy, Base the Kid. As always, please like and subscribe, share with a friend, a colleague, a relative, an associate, an enemy, any and all in between. It is appreciated. And thank you to everyone who joined the casual stream yesterday. It's a bit different uh, however i had to do it because obviously stream yard was having a bit of a nightmare but we got through it in the end i got some really good engagement some really good comments so shout out to everyone who jumped into that now there is a lot to kind of go through so i'm going to touch on certain points here and then i might do some extended segments in another video for the members but there's a lot so without further ado let's get into it so first things first, let's talk about Isaac Chamberlain vacating the British title yesterday. What was it, like an hour before purse bids were due to take place between him and Chef Clark. Now, this is one of those situations where it was never going to look good, especially when you do it on the day of the purse bid, like an hour before and, and whatnot, whatnot. However, the only reason this one isn't called as like a duck or anything like that it's purely because he is moving on to a, a tougher assignment and for sort of maybe a more prestigious belt for him he's got the british he's got the commonwealth he's done i think uh, probably like english or maybe a southern area title i'm not sure all the accolades he's had but He's vacated the British because um, he was made mandatory for the EBU European Championship. And obviously, if he was, he can't do both. He can't satisfy that mandatory. And he still got a mandatory to take care of for the British. So it, if he if he took the British fight, he'd lose the mandatory spot for the, for the European. So I kind of get the situation as to why he's vacated. Unfortunately, the fact that the vacation happened an hour before purse bids just doesn't look good, especially obviously when he's affiliated with a um, boxer from maybe like a co-promotional uh, standpoint at this point. He's, uh, you know, he's uh, signed and promoted to Hennessy Sports or Mick Hennessy, but they have an agreement with boxer whereby they do, you know, a lot of the, they bring a lot of the fighters to Sky. Um, to fight on the boxer shows sometimes or quite usually as away fighters and Isaac is obviously one of those um, one of those mainstays so yeah it looks again like it's very much a, a, a boxer and sky decision because I guess they can have more control over a uh, Mikhail S of a Michael Sislak fight than they actually can a Chef Clark fight knowing that they probably won't win a purse bid for that and it's weird though, funnily enough, because obviously they they did allow the purse bid to go through with Tyler Denny and Felix Cash. But I've always maintained that the only reason they kind of let Tyler Denny's that purse bid happen is because he's not like one of their their main guys. He's not one of their guys, that I guess, draws big numbers on TV. That's what I'm going to assume. When you look at it, you say, well, you know, Tyler Denny, you know, he hasn't lost in God knows how long. He, you know, he can bring the crowd out when he was in that, um, that hall in Wolverhampton. I can't remember what it's called, but it's similar to our York Hall, just like a nicer looking version. But he, you know, he, he packed that place out with, with local, you know, sort of the local support. But he's probably not like their, their top guy, their top name. So they don't mind throwing a purse bid to him and letting him go and fight on a different platform because you know he's just uh he's, he's almost like a i don't really want to say it this way but unfortunately i'm going to say he's like a bastard child of the, of the brand like he's there by way of the fact that he's won several fights but i guarantee the moment he loses i've i don't think they'll renew his contract um so yeah, he's definitely sort of fighting for his career on the platform, which is not a great thing because he's a really good fighter. And I, I truly like Tyler, but I think that's the only reason they allowed that post bid to take place. Um, so yeah, so you've kind of got that. And then you look at this situation, you say, well, um, you know, Isaac is, he's a top name in sort of the cruiserweights domestically. He obviously had stuff that they wanted 
Um, so you're going to kind of keep him sweet and then outside of that if he goes that EBU route and he wins that he's still good to have on the platform as extra competition for Vidal Riley and Mikhail Luau and stuff moving forward if they want to run rematches or have or have other bouts there and then possibly even getting back up to the main levels to have another Chris Billum Smith fight or a fight with Richard Riatport. so you, it would make sense to kind of keep him sweet when you've got a bunch of uh, cruiserweights on your books so I can kind of get that in that sense why you would want to protect that asset a bit more but yeah it's just not great when it happened um, and look total transparency like look Mick Hennessy doesn't owe Chev Clark doesn't owe Matchroom any kind of consideration but it just looks like poor practice uh, and this was kind of situation where you do something like that now all right it it benefits you in in this instance but what happens when you're going to need a favor from one of from a matchroom or a queensbury or a gbm or something and then they look at they look at your track record and they say oh so but this is the kind of underhanded shenanigans that you're doing it don't necessarily look good and i wouldn't be surprised if in the long run that decision comes back to to majorly affect um him or sky or whomever is the ones responsible for you know for doing it um so yeah i don't know and it also i mean look again it's hennessy so it's not necessarily boxer and ben but you go to ben shalom like i would love to sit down with eddie hearn and discuss this and get these fights sort of sorted and then you know less than a week after he says that this happens again it doesn't bode well and at this point it's almost become like a running joke and uh, you know what actually now I, now I think about it there was Ben Shalom did a there was an interview he'd done I think it was on oh, it might have been on TalkSport and they said something about oh so what are you going to do about the, the uh, what are you going to do about the purse bid between Isaac Chamberlain and and Chef Clark and I swear he made a joke or something along the lines of I, it depends how I feel in the morning what, what, what it depends how I feel the morning of and I, I'm only just remembering that now because it's almost it has become its own internal like running inside joke it's like well this is what's going to happen so probably not even get too um too worked up about it but it's bad practice and it's bad form um and maybe what Eddie Hearn should do is from now on don't send people or send representatives to to the board with the bids like maybe just make a phone call <laughs> just say okay look this is our, or send an email this is this is our this is our bid for the fight and we will catch you at the conclusion because because clearly like the the petrol and you know the manpower and you know the travel expenses and whatnot it doesn't really seem worth it at this point that's that's how i kind of look at it but yeah let me know what you guys think now look i'm not going to spend too much time on this one um but if you saw the live yesterday you saw that i had a, a whole load of fun with the fact that <laughs> I still can't keep a straight face that Clarissa Shields uh, released a diss track <laughs> to Alicia Baumgardner and her haters and all of her haters um, and yeah it was I'm not gonna it was total booty cheeks and not even the nice kind that, that, that Clarissa was clapping in the video um, what I can say I thought that I actually thought that the, the, the beat was alright I kind of was digging the beat I'll give, I'll give her that but I don't know how long she recorded, how long she took to record that. I don't know if she had a ghostwriter when she was doing it, but like, please don't ever do that again, Clarissa. Like, you you are the quote unquote quote of those upper weight classes. There's no reason for you to be resorting to that kind of tactic. And what makes it even worse is that on the broadcast over the weekend basically she was saying that alicia was doing everything for clout and she just using my name for clout and just wanting to you know she wanting the piece of the quote and the success that i have etc etc well you've done you've said all of that you had a big um you've had this big exchange back and forth with her talking about yeah okay shut me up or i'm not gonna bow down to a drug cheat and rare 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 but you're doing all of that and then you go and release a rap video you're not a rapper like you're not you, you why are you releasing a diss track when you don't do music that's not your sport your sport is boxing 
like okay talk you, yeah talk shit in some interviews but why are you why are you releasing a, a rap track to diss your haters and to diss Alicia Baumgartner it it just came off as corny it came off as cheap and it now makes her look like the clout chaser that she was claiming Alicia was and then you got everyone everyone on X is just out there laughing yeah, it's not it wasn't a smart move I don't know who decided that that was the flex but unfortunately like that flex broke <laughs> really really quickly so yeah please don't ever do that again but I understand you you're not gonna get the chance to have um you're not gonna probably get the chance to punch her in her face in the ring because you two can't come to an agreement on a weight I've said quite frankly do it at 150 you, you she wants 147 you want 154 do it at 150. I'm sure you can make that way. If you've claimed that you could make 147 in the past, you can make 150. And then you've still got the big size advantage. You still got to add on a pile on an extra 20 pounds. And you know that you've got a better work rate than she has anyway. So do that. Like, but don't ever do the, the, the rap thing again, please. It's it's not for you. I know Detroit have got have had some really good rappers in their time, but yeah, you ain't one of them. And was also announced yesterday as we saw Jerron Boots Ennis has now joined the Matchroom Stable at £147 so he is a welterweight IBF champion. Uh, Matchroom ain't really got many welterweights on their books except for Suleiman Sissoko and Connor Ben although he does seem to be campaigning north of welterweight recently. I don't know if that's maybe because he, he doesn't have the same assistance getting down to 147 or he's not in training camps long enough to be able to make the weight I'm not sure but he has been campaigning sort of like that 154 in his last two fights so i don't know if he's going to get back down there however he ha he put up a um uh instagram i think it was a, a, a post or like an instagram story saying Ben versus Boot, uh, Ben versus Ennis uh, a couple of days ago and some people thought oh he's out there he's just trying to clout chase trying to get a name again but one thing I will say about Conor Ben is he definitely wants to fight these people because he knows it draws money and previously I think that Eddie Hearn and Matchroom because they he's sort of almost the next he was supposed to be the next big star of British boxing. You kind of maneuver him in a way where you can maximize his market value until a point where maybe he gets beat. Then it's about, oh, it's the redemption story and you can kind of sell the narrative. But with the NADP um, sort of upholding this UCAD situation, I think you look at that and you say to yourself, okay, if he's can't fight in the UK right now where he, obviously his biggest market is where he's supposed to be a much bigger draw um, where he can have his his uh, most lucrative fights Chris Eubank Jr um, Harlem Eubank probably uh, maybe a step up for someone like Dalton Smith or someone else from that 140 roster going up there maybe even like a Richardson Hitchens moving up to 147 to take him on like you or a uh, Devin Haney for instance you could do all of those fights over in the UK and make tremendous money so you look at that and you say well if you don't have that ability to do those fights then him going to Las Vegas and fighting at 1 p.m in the in the morning I mean so 1 p.m in the afternoon over there so that you end up or, or 2 p.m so that you then can get a, a, a 10 30 11 o'clock viewing time in the uk that don't work it, it's you know that's just a bit of a shambles even though yeah you might fight and then you've got the rest of the day to yourself but that's just not the done thing so if it's a case that he can't you know get his uk license back or at least not get it back for now maybe this is the play for match and say you know what? all right you want the shot at the big time you want the shot Boots Ennis, we just come in, you get to fight Conor Ben, so you'll have a bit, you'll have interest from the UK from the fact that you're fighting him. You get to also fight on your stable, you get to maybe be the main event or a, a co main, depending on, I guess, who, what other card it is with. And at that point, um, ultimately, yeah, you kind of cash Conor out there, 
build a much bigger profile for boots get him out again quicker get him out again like early and make it sort of work that way now the theory is that Amanda Serrano and Katie Taylor are supposed to be official and it, they'll be taking place at the uh, Sphere in Las Vegas um, and from what I can remember I think they had a date set for maybe the 15th of June that they was looking at well if that's the case if Boots and, and, and Connor could be ready maybe you have those as the two co-main or the two headliners you get Boots maybe at the you know the the co-main with Conor Ben for the IBF. You get Amanda and KE for the undisputed 140 belts. Maybe at a catch weight, so maybe back at 135 as a catch weight, or you do it at the full 140 and see if Amanda's willing to do that. That could be a very a very nice card, and I could see a scenario where they would even look to make they could if they put enough stuff on the undercard they could probably make that a, a pay-per-view event for for the zone in the us as well i wouldn't recommend it but um it's possible that they could do something like that but yeah boot signing i mean look they haven't got a huge amount of 147s over at matchroom but at least they've got the activity for him now because they can draw they can draft in a bunch of different ringers there's a lot of people that are with management companies that will be dying for a shot and if Boots can get three fights in this year and then next year get in another three or four fights and just be active, then you can look for those unifications um, with the rest of the 140s because you know that Terence isn't going to stay down there at this point. He's going to move up to 154. We've already announced that. So when the rest of the belts get scattered, I mean, Suleiman Sissoko and Cody Crowley are going the WBC route. There's every intention that you could probably get a unification from there, especially if Suleiman Sissoko wins. And then um, I'm trying to think who's got the... Uh, then obviously we look at the other belts, the WBO and the WBA. Um, once, they, once they have winners as well, then you look to do that. And, you know, sooner or later, um, I'm talking probably by the end of next year, you're going to see um, Ennis move up to 154 anyway potentially even to 160 because he's a huge guy um he's I, i've always said he's going to end his career at 168 um there's to me there's not a doubt i'm not saying he's going to be he's going to have the best success at 168 but his prime is is 147 now yeah by the time he's 29 he's going to be at 160 and then um or 29 30 and then maybe yeah 33 33 34 he'll be like he'll be topping off at 168 um he's definitely got the frame he's got the frame for it so yeah that's kind of my thoughts on it it's a really good signing by matchroom um and finally we can always because i've had my criticisms of boots I, I think he's a don't get me wrong i think he's a great fighter but there's there's things within his game that i've seen that i feel like can get exploited but at least now i get the opportunity to see was i wrong or is it just a case that you know he was just fighting down to the level of certain competition or taking certain risks and liberties just because he knew that they weren't on his level we'll have to wait and see but yeah good signing let's get active and uh jamaica to the world <laughs> and last but not least uh so this sort of broke uh last minute in my um live yesterday whereby Anthony Yard announced that he is a his current promotional contract is expired and that his team is basically working on a new contract in the background and he's basically said as soon as that has come to fruition then obviously the Bawatsi fight will happen because both he wants it and Bawatsi wants it or whatnot now quite frankly this whole situation to me it's it seems like stall tactics if I'm if I'm gonna be real like when have we we ever heard like Joshua Bawatsi chasing a fight and even before when he was like yeah well look if I you know I, if I got a fight Anthony Yard I'll fight Anthony Yard rare, rare. but he never it was always Eddie Hearn was kind of pushing it and then you know he left Hearn and we didn't hear much about it but then all of a sudden like Yard's team was pushing it well now all of a sudden like Bawatsi's free there's issues there's problems coming about and don't get me wrong like 
get your money if this is the way that you get to the biggest bag i do what you need to do but the optics the optics just don't look good it really looks like you're the one holding up this fight especially when man came to your last fight like stood right beside you at ringside didn't even want to take your moment but they put him in front of you and he said look i want this fight so this is his moment i want him to enjoy this moment but everyone knows that i want this fight and i'm ready for this fight it's been a long time coming so let's make it happen and even at that point i'm not gonna lie that the energy from yard at that particular moment didn't sound it sounded like okay yeah we can do the fight but it didn't sound like it was you know the the proper energy that you needed the okay yeah let's make that fight happen next everything was about oh well you know the deal's gotta be right for both of us and da 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 like so you just that energy just told me something was off and then you know we saw this the stuff on stamina for sale uh on the on the fight is right the podcast which got removed after after tunde went a bit too overboard um and now we've got this situation here where clearly they're trying to negotiate crazy money i don't know to what level but it seems as if yeah there's a problem brewing over in that stable but here's the thing i would have suggested to anthony yard to do the free the free agent thing i right, become a free agent do a one fight deal with sky do a one fight deal with uh the zone or, or match him do a one fight deal with whoever's got the whoever's got the the talent i mean they keep saying that he's a big star in the states okay well then do a one fight deal for you know to fight someone over in the states or, or sign with the pbc or sign with top rank but i know for a fact they won't do that because if you look at it, if you check it right queensbury are the only people that are gonna allow anthony yard to have the kind of fights he's been having if if he signs a new con if he signs a contract with matchroom do you think he gets a bulgarian sweet uh, a street sweeper you know do you think he gets a peruvian dental nurse to to get in the ring and fight or you know uh, a, po a polish um bin bin collector you, you're not getting these people or someone that's a full-time police officer like that does boxing on the side you don't get these type of opponents if you if you go to match with me even your your gimme fight quote unquote is going to be of a higher standard than what you've been fighting on queensbury no one's going to pay you top dollar or even decent money to fight the level of a position you've been fighting especially when you're supposed to be a quote-unquote world-class talent so if you're world-class you need to be i'm not saying you've got every single fight be fighting the total killers of the division but you need to be fighting people that are at least within the top 10 top 15 and we're not just talking about one individual sanctioning body we're talking about the top 15 divisional rankings whether that's the ring whether that's the the trans uh, the trans boxing union or any of those you know sort of recognized rankings you've got to be fighting someone in there to cement your place to then be going for these um you know for these mandatory shots if you don't think that you can get a voluntary against these people I've heard things for in in the background about other fights that haven't been taken but i'm not going to put those out there uh, those of you who've probably seen some other videos you might have heard some of those that i've i've mentioned previously but yeah it just doesn't look good it just looks like stall tactics at this moment and i know that boatsy wants it and ultimately he you know he kind of needs a a big fight you know the Dan Aziz fight wasn't necessarily like a big fight for him in that sense but at this point if I was him I'd say all right you know what forget this this is long you're taking you're taking time I've said that I want to be active and I'm not I'm not getting to be active because people are trying to hold me up if I was him I'd go and fight any and anybody at this point just go and take a warm-up fight or a, a keep busy fight against someone again top 10 top 15 and then just relax because ultimately he's um number one in two different sanctioning bodies at this point uh the wba and i think the ibf as well i think he's number one ranked in the in the ibf so regardless he's gonna get his shot at the um at the titles at some point as soon as you know 
better be even Bibble will have their first fight they might have a second um, he might have to wait until next year to get a tie if that's what he really wants but he can you know he can parlay his current position into just having a couple of keep busy fights for for money I wouldn't be waiting on, on Anthony Yard to sort out his business when we've seen that his business quite often keeps him out of the ring for 10 months at a time and then coming back against two no hopers with the promise of maybe a big fight after that which now we ain't seeing so that's kind of how I see it please let me know what you guys think um, in the comments below and yeah we'll sort of leave it there but I want to thank you obviously for watching um, and basis picks be out tomorrow be out early because i know that there's a uh, actually i think there's a there's a top rank card on tonight i'll have to double check if so then i might have to put out basis picks a bit later on tonight instead of tomorrow but yeah we'll wait and see but for right now thank you for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share that's the hardcore casual out